we have a couple of different ways of surveying amphibians. And the first method, which is a little bit more traditional, is just to, to go out and look for them, you know, if they leap into the water or if you hear them chorusing or even taking uh, dip nets in some cases to look for tadpoles. And the way that people typically do this, they'll go out for repeat surveys over a short period of time. And they'll use um, that series of, you know, we saw them on day one, but we didn't see them on day two, and then we saw them again on day three. They'll use that to model kind of how, how often we're seeing them, so the probability of actually detecting them. And that, that method is called occupancy modeling, and that's what most amphibian folks use. But another method we're using to detect amphibians is an emerging method, and it's a molecular method. So you may have seen us walking around sampling for water earlier. We'll take that, um, that Nalgene bottle with water in it back to the lab, and we can actually extract um, fragments of DNA that are just floating around in the water. And we can design a test um, to pick out those particular fragments that we're interested in. And so we design a species-specific molecular test in the lab that'll tell us, yes, there was leopard frog in this water, yes, there was chorus frog, no, there wasn't tiger salamander. And the DNA sticks around in the water for maybe up to two weeks, and so you're getting, you're getting a snapshot. And so we're really excited about trying that out. Those tests haven't actually been developed for two out of the three species that we're working with here. And so um, once we have that going, we can hopefully pass that on as a, as a potential management tool for, for agencies like Game and Fish who are maybe interested in expanding their amphibian surveys across the state. There's, you know, the hope um, certainly that, that these methods are more sensitive but also potentially that they're cheaper. Typically people would go out and survey a pond many times over the course of the summer, which I'm doing as well. But um, if you can just go out to a pond once, you know, dip a test tube in there, take a water sample and then and be done with it, it actually might wind up being cheaper in terms of, you know, man hours. Um, so, and of course anyone can do it too, right? You can just, you know, if somebody wanted to start a citizen scientist program collecting water samples at different wetlands around the state, you know, it doesn't take any real amount of training to get people to do that. You just need someone to analyze it in the lab. So there's a lot of potential um, for these techniques.